Hello, everybody. This is going to be our video lecture on iterative averaging and phasers. So let's just get into it. Uh, first of all, there's a quiz <clears throat> in this quiz, uh, which I would like everyone to uh, do or write your pseudocode at home. Um, this is taken straight from the RiceX videos. Um, we're going to have a for all phase loop. We're going to pass it in uh, the I values. So the uh, one and two will be passed in here. And then we do a normal, good old fashioned Java sequential for loop. Um, we're going to print out I, J, and A, then do phaser next, then print I, J, B. Okay. And what I want you to imagine is you want to build this ex uh, an equivalent um, parallel program. I want you to imagine for all phase, the next don't exist. And I just want you to build uh, the same simple program with just for all loops. And so if everyone can pause and write out your pseudocode, and then we'll continue when you're done. All right, so we're back. And so uh, hopefully you all uh, dug into this. Um, I would say the first question for everyone is how many for all loops do you have? Okay, so, um, and how many for all loops are gonna execute? So if you've got for all inside of a for loop, um, and just count on how many they are and just come up with your answer. Okay, so uh, I'm not sure how many of you got the number three. I have run this, uh, this, uh, this question in every section of the course that I've taught. Uh, some semesters I get zero people to get the correct answer, which is three. Sometimes I get one or maybe two out of 100 will actually get three. A ton of people say two, a ton of people say four. People have them inside of four loops. Um, and so, uh, but very few people get three. And so let's sort of break this down really quickly. Uh, the first thing I want you to imagine is this code right here is equivalent to this code. I just took this inner for loop and unrolled it. So I said J equals one, printed it out, hit next, then did the bottom of the for loop, set J to two, printed A again, did the phaser next, and then printed B. So these two pieces go to the exact same. In this situation, it's much easier to see that there's three phases, right? And so uh, it's a lot easier to write this version out as this correct version, um, which is, uh, well, one to two inclusive, right? That this is the, uh, the same version of that code pure. So um, this phasing unrolling makes things much easier uh, for me to see the three phases and uh, starts to sort of get at what's going on here. Um, <clears throat> people have asked, what's the computation graph for this? You can imagine um, for all phase comes out, you can run these two in parallel, so either one can happen. The next brings everybody together, then uh, it does the these two uh, sequential continuations are in parallel with each other. So for example, like 11B and 22A can run in parallel with each other. Um, and these two can run in parallel, you know, and the next goes like that. So that's what the computation graph looks like. Um, you know, algorithmically speaking, it's sort of the same, um, it's in many ways the same, they, they produce the same computation graph-ish, I would say. Um, this next uh, has less overhead than the uh, creation and destruction of the for all loops situation. So the phaser next really has lower overhead, so that's how it's different, but the computation graph that you would draw would look very similar for both of them. Let's talk about how it works. Um, what's going on here is instead of, uh, you know, uh, if you have this very common pattern, which is to iterate a ton and create, destroy, uh, join and destroy the tasks over and over again, like, how about I just create all the tasks once and then iterate a ton and just have this phaser join it together each time? Um, when would you use this? When is this a big deal? Um, what I would say is uh, this is both a good and bad example. I remember our page rank uh, situation where we were talking about trying to find out uh, how, to, how Google will find a good uh, answer for Disney World. Um, this has uh, this idea that when you're done map producing it, you would then iterate over all the things in the web um, to converge on a good uh, ranking for each page. Now, this only requires about 52 iterations in the original paper to converge to a good answer. So it's not a ton of iterations. So in that way, it's not uh, the best example. Um, or you're not gonna get as much uh, out of the, the phaser as you would for like 100,000 or a million iterations. Um, but this, I, this, these programs that have the form um, 
iterate a ton and then do a parallel for loop inside, that's not uh, rare. That's something that's important enough that they built phasers. Um, and you're going to do this thing which produces the same conceptual program, but just has lower overhead. And so um, just to get into the studio today, uh, there's a, a quick video to watch that takes you through the warm up, uh, which is the sequential iterative aperture. Um, and so like I encourage you all to watch that. Uh, we're going to not use the X10 features. Uh, the reason why is because X10 was so successful that they actually put a phaser into Java. They actually give credit to Saraswat and Sarkar for this uh, feature um, and just reference X10 in their thing. So see, uh, uh, attribution and credit is always important. Um, and so let's talk about how this phaser works. First of all, you can bulk register a phaser. That's how many tasks you're expecting to call to basically do that next from X10, where how many tasks are you going to make and how many of them are going to call next or what's going to be called arrive and await advance with the phaser um, before it moves on to the next phase. So that's that part. There's arrive, which says, I've shown up, that's useful for fuzzy barriers, which we'll get to next week. There's a weight advance for some phase. Again, that's for a more sophisticated version that we'll talk about uh, in the next time for fuzzy barriers. Um, and then there's arrive and await advance. And this is sort of the closest thing to just phase or next. Uh, that signals to everyone I've arrived and waits for everybody else. So um, this works in conjunction with that bulk register. Um, and again, just to talk about this really quickly, there's sort of the parallel, the normal parallel version which is just, I have a sequential for loop on the outside and each iteration of that loop can be done in parallel. Um, we can transfer that into a phased version of it by simply flipping this inside out. We create a phaser, register uh, um, the phaser, we, let, we bulk register each task with that phaser, and then we say arrive and await advance at either, each iteration of the sequential for loop. Okay. Um, so let's build a couple of utilities to make our lives easier. Like, um, first of all, we're going to need to uh, slice up the data. And for uh, an example where, let's say, an array is 11 long and I ask you for three slices, um, it's really going to be convenient if you just ignore the first and last element and just make these three slices in here. So um, you're going to use this in every iterative average you build. So let's just build a um, a a utility for that. There's a video that goes into this in a little bit more depth, so I encourage you all to watch that. Um, and the second bit of utility is, all right, well, we talked about how we're going to be skipping the beginning and end um, just to make our lives easier. While we're at it, while we're going to create this phaseable uh, double arrays, which you should be familiar with from scan, where it flips back and forth between things. Um, instead of an int array, we're going to use double arrays. Um, we're going to make something that will uh, handle this uh, gracefully for ourselves. Since we have to create buffers for our phaseable double arrays, we might as well uh, initialize them correctly. And this video goes into that in more detail. So I encourage you to watch that also. <clears throat> You're then going to build the parallel iterative averager. Um, this is just the normal one with the sequential for loop on the outside and the parallel one on the inside. Just to uh, give you a heads up, slice count is passed to the constructor. Then you're going to build the phased parallel iterative averager. Again, the slice count is passed to the constructor. Um, and you're going to flip it inside out, right? So you're going to do uh, the parallel for loop on the outside, the sequential one on the inside, and use a phaser to join them all together. Um, <clears throat> as a little uh, help, there's a phaser warm up for you to dig into. There's also a video that goes through it that I encourage you to watch. Um, one last note before we, uh, we dig in, I will say that uh, it's tricky to get a performance improvement. There is less overhead in the phaser, and that's why it exists, and you can actually make it better. Um, we're going to do point-to-point uh, -point and fuzzy um, iterative averaging as a challenge uh, coming up next time. Um, and you can actually squeeze out more performance, despite it being the same parallel program, just because the phaser doesn't create the tasks, do the work, join them, throw them away, and do it again. Right? By simply creating the task once, um, you can, uh, and just joining them at each iteration, you get better performance. You also can get better cache uh, performance for those of you who have taken 361 or something similar. Um, so there's a lot of benefits to it. It's tricky to get the performance out. Uh, and so like for, as an example, I, the common pool 
which is the normal thing that you use, was slow on the Mac, so I switched to a fixed tool. Um, that's the sort of thing that I had to do to make the performance go better. Also, um, it's really easy to lock things up with phasers, so you have to be careful with them. Um, and again, uh, you uh, sometimes these uh, tools that get eke out more performance uh, can have a little bit of a razor blade on them, so you've got to be careful. And with that, I will say uh, dig into the Iterative Averaging Studio, and good luck. Have fun.